Uh, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I need to make a confession. Um, three years ago, I didn't know anything about OER or the Creative Commons. Uh, it's, it's very new. It's very new. Uh, although the concept of sharing has been there for quite some time, uh, OER, the, the concept of open educational resources is quite new. So uh, we are learning as we go as well. That's why we, we, planned, we, we undertook the project to see what others think in, in Asia. And, and we, we found some, some interesting uh, uh, results or patterns uh, that I would like to share with you today. And uh, these results will confirm what uh, the professor who spoke before me uh, mentioned to you as well. Uh, first of all, uh, housekeeping. Uh, this uh, project was funded by the IDRC, and uh, it was a 27-month project. So we are very grateful to the uh, International Development Research Center of Canada for sponsoring this project. Right, talking points. Uh, what I'm going to do today is to have a look at what OER is in, in the Asian region, uh, what digital resources are. Um, I'll explain to you the difference between OER and digital resources uh, once I get into my slides. Uh, are institutions ready for it? And, and what we recommend, well, recommendations uh, uh, shouldn't be made to people who are really new to the area. They should go, go and you know, try it out for themselves, come back with some feedback, and then take our recommendations. What we like to give you is some points to uh, ponder on when you, when you go back to your respective institutions. Okay, the, the, the survey, uh, it was a very extensive survey, very long, very boring to fill in. Uh, but we persuaded quite a number of people, uh, uh, quite a large number of people to fill in the survey instrument. Uh, we had two components, a institutional perspective as well as an individual perspective. And we, we had around uh, 70 odd large items uh, for people to go through. The survey was uh, basically concentrating on a few regions in Asia, uh, uh, namely Malaysia, Vietnam, Indonesia, India, Philippines, Japan, China, Hong Kong, and South Korea. The, the duration was 27 months, and we had collaborators, and, and these people had heard of OER before I did, so uh, they knew what they were talking about. And, and, and uh, we had these collaborators work with us for uh, the past two and a half years on this particular project. The, the scope of the survey was to identify three things, uh, learning content, tools, uh, and implementation resources. So we, we basically wanted to see uh, what people thought, what people did, and, and how, we, how people uh, found digital resources and open educational resources, how they used it, and what sort of tools they used. Did they use Google? Or, or did they use uh, Wiki Educator or MIT uh, OCW? So these are the kind of questions we had for them when we conducted the survey. The objectives, we, we have a, a, a large list of objectives. Uh, and as with any project, uh, it's quite difficult to you know, achieve all of the objectives. But uh, in a broader sense, what we wanted to know was the use of open educational resources, the use of digital resources, as well as the, the licensing issues, whether they knew about the Creative Commons professor spoke to you about, and, and uh, whether they were using any other kind of licensing in terms of their digital resources, or whether they were oblivious to the whole idea of, of copyright. Um, as you can see over here, uh, we had around 420 uh, individuals who uh, valid responses. We had around uh, 600 overall, uh, but some people got tired halfway and quit, so we had to take them out. And uh, institutional re representatives, we had around 98 valid responses. Uh, these people actually uh, uh, are people who who are engaged in some sort of activities in, in terms of digital resources. And, and open educational resources. For example, like uh, Dr. K.S. Yuen from OUHK, who is uh, involved in, in this area. Uh, we have, uh, on top of the, uh, the countries or regions uh, I mentioned earlier, we have some other regions as well. Uh, for example, we had Bangladesh, we had Sri Lanka, uh, and, and we had some of the, uh, the Caribbean islands respond to the survey as well. But because we were concentrating on Asia, we, we kind of uh, put them all as the other and, and kind of concentrated on the main hubs of, of this movement. 
the, the, partisan, uh, the respondent profile, uh, we uh, sent the survey to, it, the survey was conducted offline as well as online, uh, and we have a good mix of participants, um, uh, senior academics, uh, mid-level academics, as well as junior academics, and uh, they are from a mix of institutions, so it will be interesting to see later on how these people responded and, and what they said about the use of digital resources and OER. Teaching profiles, uh, we had um, around 270, 273, as it, as, as it says over here, undergraduates, and around half of that uh, with respect to postgraduates. I mean, that's kind of representative of, of the institutional, uh, uh, institutional mix with respect to undergraduates and postgraduates. So I think we captured uh, both of them fairly. Right, digital resources and OER, what's the difference? Um, Overall, we have, as, as teachers or, or, or uh, higher education lecturers, we have educational resources which we use, including textbooks and, and you know, uh, material downloaded slides and all of that. And then there are digital resources. Uh, we need to use a computer for that. Uh, and a subset of digital resources are OER. So although we, we use YouTube, it might not be an OER. And, and sometimes you might download a, uh, a set of uh, presentations from the web and it might be an OER, but uh, sometimes people don't know or, or can't distinguish between the two. Uh, if it's a digital resource and not an OER, you might be able to get away with using it, uh, but uh, if it's an OER, most, most probably you'll get away with using it. Right. Uh, looking at digital resources, uh, we had to define digital resources for our, our uh, respondents. So we, we wanted to capture a broad canvas, but, but we had to limit their, their, their responses so that when we did the analysis, we had some reference point. So as you can see over here, these are the, these are the uh, guidelines we put through for our, our respondents. Okay, the use of digital resources. By and large, in Asia, most of us use text-based uh, uh, digital uh, resources. So, uh, as you can see over here, at, the, at uh, point number six, you have digital readers, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader, and things like that. But when you get into OER a bit more, you would know that uh, Adobe Acrobat or, or the PDF format is, the, is one of the most restrictive uh, uh, formats in terms of open educational resources. So we are still using it and people do publish their work as PDF. So is that really, I mean, although they put CC underneath there, is it, is, is it really serving the purpose of open educational resources? We also see that uh, digital film and video are, are preferred by around 50%. Uh, and these, I think uh, the, the, the rise in video and film is basically due to uh, uh, YouTube and, and Vimeo. Uh, for example, YouTube now has a, a uh, mix and match editor where you can uh, put together uh, Creative Commons uh, license videos together and create your own uh, video, uh, no restrictions. Uh, the use, okay, uh, simulations and animations. People say we are not using it, but you know, when, it, when you talk about digital resources, learning objects, uh, especially in the sciences, uh, we use a lot of learning objects, you know, JavaScripts, uh, 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 um, which, which actually uh, give you animations, you know, show you how, you know, a car speed and, you know, uh, how acceleration works and, you know, what vectors are and things like that. But it seems that people are not using those. There are, there are large repositories of these, but people are not using those. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking that it's because uh, of the technical barrier uh, that, you know, us, us teachers have uh, in terms of putting that into our, our teaching material. Uh, if you go to, uh, if you look at uh, point nine and ten, you can see that the MIT OCW and uh, Merlot uh, are not very widely used either, and and uh, also course packs. Course packs are, are heavily subsidized by governments uh, and and uh, multinational organizations, uh, but people rarely use them. So this is this was new to us as well. Uh, and, and that was, you know, part of the, the findings we made. Sources. Okay, everyone uses Google, and it seems like these people like using Google as well. 
So uh, they say we predominantly use Google to find our digital resources. Whether they're OER or not, uh, I don't think they make the, dis the, the distinction between that. Uh, in my opinion, Google will not find you open education resources unless it's indexed in uh, MIT or, or connections. So uh, unless you have specific skills in terms of locating OER using Google, I don't think you are, you are locating OER at all. But that's just me. Right, support. Um, there's, a, there's a laundry list of, of points that they, they raised. But uh, the, the main thing is they, they can't find the digital resources they want to use in their teaching and learning. And the second thing is, you know, as academics, we, we like to assess the credibility of these things. You know, if it comes from a textbook, uh, most of the time it's peer reviewed and it's like 90% you know, of the time it's accurate. Uh, so we trust textbooks. But uh, when it's an open resource like, you know, Wikipedia self policing, how do we actually, you know, uh, assess the credibility of the source, you know, before we put it through to our students? They might pull up a textbook and say, hey, that's wrong, and, and, and you end up in a quandary. So that's one of the, one of the problems, uh, Professor Rajan might disagree, but <laughs> that's, that's one of the problems we, we, we found out in this. And uh, evaluating the appropriateness, again, is, is the same thing. Uh, the last point, uh, uh, interpreting copyright. Um, it was, uh, it was uh, one of the most interesting things we found out, and it's one of the major barriers to, to this particular movement. I'll go into it later on. Okay, why use digital resources? Our findings actually confirm the, the uh, anecdotal assumptions we've made in the literature about the use of digital resources and OER. You know, um, a, a, for example, it provides students a context of the topic, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the, and the uh, data actually proves that it's true. So, so in terms of, in terms of uh, the movement, I think you know, what we did actually proves what we already knew uh, uh, statistically. But if you look at the last one, the last two points in red, um, they, they really don't see OER as a career move. Uh, they, they, they see it as, as, as a social responsibility or philanthropy. So uh, it, it might be because institutions don't have policies at the moment to incentivize and, and support and so on. But they're getting there, they're getting there. For example, my, my university, Wausan Open University, is now implementing a policy on, on, it's a draft policy, but it's a start on uh, open education resources. So universities are getting there. I'm sure OUHK is doing the same. Uh, barriers, we did find uh, a few barriers, but the biggest barriers are these. I don't have software. Uh, there are plenty of software out there. I, coming from the open source movement myself, before uh, you know, going into OER, there are plenty of software out there, but I think it's, it's, it's a lack of knowledge or understanding of what softwares can do. And the open source guys are, 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 are quite uh, humble, okay, if I say so myself. Uh, they're, they're quite humble. They, they don't go about bragging, uh, uh, they, they don't go about bragging about their, their softwares. So they just put it up there and let people use it. So it's, it's, your, it's your call to go and find it. For example, some other you know, bigger uh, software development giants would uh, actively promote their, their software and you will have to pay for them. So that might be why people are saying we can't find the relevant software. Okay, being in Asia, students don't have access to computers, students don't have access to high-speed high internet. I, I can relate to that. In, in Malaysia, our students uh, suffer from the same, same problem. Uh, so, but when, when I go into my slides, uh, the, the later part of the slides, you will see that at least the institutions are not suffering from that. So that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a positive sign uh, uh, to say that the infrastructure, at least in the, uh, the bigger uh, e-learning and ODL institutions, are, are actually established. Right, before we go into OER, I know, I know you ha heard uh, a definition before. And you've heard about the four R's of OER. Uh, it's, it's true. I mean, if you don't have the four R's, it's not an OER. But you can, you can have one or two R's, and it still becomes an OER, but it's just restricted. So uh, I, I like to call it the, the desirability of an OER, how desirable an OER is. 
uh, with respect to use and reuse. So when it comes to your own uh, use and reuse, you have, to, you have to figure out what you want with an OER and how desirable a particular OER is for, uh, uh, for your use and reuse. So basically, an OER is a, is a piece of material, uh, uh, audio, video, text, uh, which is available uh, freely. And you can reuse, remix, oh, sorry, you can reuse, remix, rehash, and create your own uh, uh, derivations of it. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a concept, I think it's a concept similar to the open source concept or the, or the uh, well, open source concept, uh, where, you know, Java, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of Java, I introduced object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming basically concentrates on building a car, not building a wheel. So uh, OER is similar. It, it concentrates on building a course, not a learning object. So if you already have uh, learning objects, put them together and build a course for your students. It's, it's similar to, to, to the open source movement and, and the uh, object-oriented programming where you actually pull things together and you build on it. If, uh, if object-oriented programming didn't come through, then we wouldn't have all of this. You know, we would be typing in commands uh, uh, on, on, a, on a command prompt. So look at it that way. It's, it's important what you build out of it, whether you build a Toyota or a, or a Ferrari, the, the wheels would be the same. Uh, academic use, okay. I, I, have, I have some doubts about this. People say they've used uh, OER before, 65%, and they say 80% uh, uh, says that they will use. Uh, by show of hands, how many of you have used OER before? One, fantastic. Two, three. So that's like what one percent. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. So my my answer, being the researcher, I have to defend my work. Uh, this this is because our 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 um, the the cross section we took of academics are, are by and large influenced by the open university system. Uh, so because of that, they have some knowledge of OER. Uh, because all the OUs are kind of going into OER, so they say, yeah, we've used it. That's one explanation. The other explanation is they have no clue what OER is, and they say, okay, I've used YouTube, most probably that's an OER. So uh, further research is needed in that area. Um, okay, sources. Again, they say freely downloaded from the internet. Most of them use that. Um, and I, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, draw your attention to point number three, the, the green one. Uh, again, we have all of these established, you know, OER repositories, you know, very, uh, you know, very reputed. Uh, there, there is, uh, as, as, a, as an academic, you don't have, uh, you know, to assess the quality of a piece of material, you really have to read it. There is no way a machine can do that for you. Right, so uh, one of the models uh, uh, adopted by the OER aficionados is to say that if it comes from a very reputed repository, it's of good quality, right? And MIT is supposed to be one of those, and, and connections as well. Uh, but it seems that not many people trust that view, <laughs> right? Uh, except for Vietnam, none of the others seem to be very interested in these areas. Vietnam, of course, has a very strong presence in terms of uh, this area, MIT and OCW and things like that. So I think it's a, it's a country, you know, uh, it's sensitizing the country towards what's out there and, and what sort of uh, OER resources you want to go, go on with. Uh, production, again, people say that they've produced only 26% uh, said we haven't produced. I, again, doubt that. Uh, uh, so it's, it seems, it's, it's not that the data is wrong. I think our academics are a bit confused about what really OERs are. I mean, you, you take 100 people, only one would actually explain to you what an OER is, if that. So um, I, I don't think it's wrong. I just think, it, I just think that we are confused. So, so more capacity building needs to be done just like this one. Uh, so that people get to know what exactly an OER is and what exactly you can do with an OER. Right. Uh, uh, the previous speaker uh, spoke about quite a number of models, uh, and one of the best models for an institution is to uh, have partnerships and exchange uh, resources. Let me give you an example. If OUHK and Wawasan Open University collaborated 
on a, a uh, BSc in computer science, which has, uh, let's say, 12 courses. And uh, Wawasan Open University developed six, and OUHK developed six, then we would have cut our course development course, uh, cost by 50%, right? And we share. So uh, imagine 12 universities coming together, developing one. So, and they put together and share the curriculum. So that's, that's a very important aspect if you are to sustain the movement in a university. The, the, the analogy used is the giving up the crown jewels of the university. Uh, you don't have to give up all of them, you know, just one or two, <laughs> and, and take a few more. So, you know, giving a, it's give and take. So, you know, that's, that's how it will work. Otherwise, if you put in money and develop and make it open and don't collaborate, then you don't find much sense in, in doing that, at least in my opinion. Right, looking at it, we don't talk to our other universities, we don't talk to our peers, we don't like sharing. Although we say open educational resources, we don't share, we don't uh, collaboratively produce, we don't exchange. So, problem. So that's, that's something we need to look into uh, in terms of collaborating between universities, not just in a single country, but you know, all over the region and, and maybe all over the world. Uh, I, 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 uh, sorry, um, I mentioned earlier about the barriers. Um, these are institutions saying uh, that uh, we don't have a lack of hardware, we don't have a lack of software, and we don't have a lack of computers. And, and teachers also say we, we don't experience that, at least at the institutional level. So that's good. But all of them you know, uh, blindly agree that uh, uh, students don't have access to these things all the time. Uh, the, the three main barriers are uh, awareness, skills, and st awareness, skills, and time. So again, capacity building or, or on the part of the institutions, uh, I would say, is needed. Right, concerns on use of OER. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to digest all of that. Just just have a look at the first two. People are worried about copyright infringement and legalities. That's the main reason they don't use uh, OER. Okay, if you, if your educational technology department went ahead and got, got copyright clearance on a textbook, then you have no problems using that. But if it's down to you to see whether it's it's uh, it's uh, clear and whether you are not infringing copyrights, then uh, of course you are a bit you know you have a little bit of trepidation before you go ahead and include that in your course material. So that's, that's, what I, that's use. Let's look at uh, publication. 58% say uh, they, they haven't published, okay? But they are willing to publish. So they say 60% says I'm willing to publish. And 10%, you know, they, they just, just don't care. I think they're too old. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Right, again, um, concerns, concerns on publishing. Again, look at the first two, uh, copyright. So use and publishing. The, the fundamental concern is copyright. So what is the Creative Commons doing at the moment? And don't people know about the Creative Commons? So uh, that's, that's the next question we asked. Oops. Right, are you aware of copyright? Yeah, most of them are. So, so I guess I guess it's not a matter of ignorance. I think I think it's just that because you know what copyright infringement is, you are really really shaking in your boots to to use anything. But being Asians, I think some people are, are advocating you know educational piracy according to Prof. Wright. So we shouldn't be pirates. But but anyway, the CC actually allows you to legally use it. So we we know that co there's a there's a copyright concern as academics. But we didn't know that Creative Commons actually allows you to allows you a lot of freedom to, to use it. Uh, use of copyright licenses uh, again, not many have used any licenses, and and the Creative Commons uh, individuals around thirty percent have have used it, and institutions about fifteen percent. So we 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 need a little little bit of work in that area with respect to uh, uh, copyright licensing. Uh, I mean, I need to make something clear. Creative Commons is not the only license out there. 
uh, uh, there's the open document license and there are, there are regional institutional licenses which you can use uh, to declare that it is open. And you can even have your own license. You can just say, this is the copyright of so and so, but I release it to you to do anything you want. So that's also a license. But, but the, the governed license or the acceptance, accepted license is the Creative Commons license at the moment. So uh, better you know, read up on it and, and see what's, what's going on there. Copyright concerns, uh, remixing, is there a problem? Even, in cre even when you use Creative Commons, they're, they're, uh, when you mix and match, there are things to consider. Uh, for example, you can't uh, mix a CC BY with a CC BY SA because the or, 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 or CC BY SA with a CC BY NC. So you know there, there are certain certain uh, uh, permutations you can work with, and and there are certain limitations. So you can't just say just because it's CC, CC you you can't you can uh, take it and and combine it. I've been shown a three-minute card, so I'm gonna rush through this. A um, lot of benefits. Uh, Bringing down costs for students and bringing down co uh, course development costs is, is among them. So as I said earlier, we have to collab collaborate. Right, going into uh, recommendations. I promise you it's just a few more slides, two or three. Uh, <laughs> capacity building, uh, institutional uh, level is very important. Uh, a culture of collaboration. You have to collaborate with your peers. Uh, and. Um, Content licensing, go read up on it. If not, go join a workshop. There are a lot of, uh, plenty of uh, online webinars. They're free. Uh, you can go and join. And institutions to establish policies. There has to be some sort of a policy for us to go ahead and do it. If it's not in our job description, we won't. Uh, some of us are radicals, but then again, you know, that's, that's not advised. Okay. Uh, over here, I have the whole list of collaborators. Some of them are here. Professor Raj, Professor Lee Yawan. Uh, Professor Dariano, Professor Yamada, some here, some are here as well. Dr. K. S. Yuan. So um, uh, some of them just left, uh, you know, a few few hours back. I need to acknowledge OUHK. Thank you very much for a, uh, for a lovely workshop. Uh, uh, you, they, they spoiled us like crazy, took us out, you know, all the time. Great food, so we didn't do much work. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. We did a lot of work. <laughs> All of these slides, all the, all the materials will be available on oerasia.org. It's, uh, it's a website dedicated to open educational resources in the Asian region. It's a community. You can blog, you can, you can speak, you, know, you can voice out your opinions, you can share. Uh, and we will put all of this on there. There is a, there is a fully online workshop there as well for you, to, uh, for you to have a look at. Right, that's a beautiful picture which we took. And, um, I am not going to take questions at this point, right? Later on. Okay, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll have, have them over coffee. All right, thank you very much.